Now that SHR is gone, let's talk about Silly Season. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. It is time for another Silly Season update, like one of those second date updates if you unfortunately listen to terrestrial radio. None of those are real, by the way. Sorry to burst your bubble if you thought that they were. But on the topic of Silly Season, Bob Pockers posted his Silly Season update. I'll kind of go over what he said and then throw in a couple things that have been floating around the rumor mill. The biggest possible opening in Silly Season could be the number 19 car at Joe Gibbs Racing, because Martin Truex Jr. still has not decided if he's going to retire and go all Andy Dufresne, sail off to an abandoned beach somewhere and enjoy his days, or if he's going to return and continue to struggle with crew chief James Small. He has a decision to make. Uh, Obviously, Joe Gibbs would like him to make that sooner rather than later. But if he does retire, things could get kind of interesting. Bob Hawkers mentions that Chase Briscoe could be in play for that seat, as well as Eric Jones going all Jamie McMurray and returning back to Joe Gibbs Racing like Jamie returned back to Ganassi after he had previously left. That is a very funny timeline. I kind of hope that that's the direction that they go. Another name that popped up for possibly taking over that seat is Noah Gragson. Noah, of course, has become the hottest commodity in the garage area right now after a disastrous first year at Legacy Motor Club, which saw him get fired, obviously, a little over halfway through the season. He's now rebounded and has looked really stout. He has a strong relationship with Bass Pro Shops, and that could really help him land this seat. And I've been part of the TRD Joe Gibbs family before. Seeing him go back there would certainly be interesting after the career turmoil that he's had. But for Noah, that would be a massive massive landing spot. Obviously, Eric Amarola's name has also been mentioned possibly for this seat as like a seat warmer for a year. That would be the ultimate failing upwards for Eric Amarola if that does happen. But Chase Briscoe, again, the guy's been in the Cup Series for four years and some change. He has one Cup Series victory and teams are very, very high on him. Obviously, he has a great relationship with Mahendra. Would he bring them over with him? Remains to be seen, but he could be in play at Joe Gibbs Racing if Martin Truex Jr. retires. And then there's Trackhouse, who continues to be a part of Silly Season. Because if NASCAR caps charters at three, like we've heard about, much like China, then Trackhouse is going to have to make a decision on who to put up for adoption. And right now, it sounds like that driver would be Zane Smith. We know that Ross Chastain has a long-term deal. They're negotiating a renewal with Daniel Suarez for some reason. And then the idea is that Shane Van Gisbergen would move up and take over that third seat at Trackhouse as they're expected to acquire a charter from Stuart Haas Racing. They just have not formally announced it yet. That leaves Zane Smith out in the dark, in the cold, up for adoption. Unfortunate for him. He's 34th in NASCAR Cup Series standings to start the year. And while I think that Zane Smith has a lot of upside, Truck Series champion, Truck Series winner, uh, looked good subbing for Brad Keselowski uh, or Chris Buescher, whoever he subbed for when he did that. The kid is good. I just think he's in a bad situation. Obviously, he's a rookie driver with a first-year expansion team over in that 71 car. Things just have not worked out at all for him and I'd be bummed to see him lose out on that seat but uh, he hasn't really done anything of merit this year and we'll see Michael McDowell takes over that ride next year maybe he'll do something with it but he has to be looking at it right now going oh man like Bradley Cooper having to call Doug's wife uh (sighs) we fucked up "Ah, I might have messed this up badly here so track house If NASCAR caps the charters at three, could be an interesting spot and could cast Zane Smith out of the family and say, I hope you land on your feet, buddy. Good luck with that. So, bummer for him. Then we have the Wood Brothers, fame number 21 car. Harrison Burton is expected to be out at the end of the year, and they would obviously like to get a competent driver in there. Not that Harrison Burton's not competent, but a driver that, you know, is a bit more of a veteran. That isn't a rookie that they're not going to have to have a huge learning curve with. Chase Briscoe is, again, the guy that they're probably most coveted. Obviously, Chase has strong ties to Ford. Him going over to the Wood Brothers makes a lot of sense. He could eventually end up at Team Penske, even, if that's how things want to work out there. But Ford is high on Chase Briscoe. The Wood Brothers, of course, are a Ford factory team. They always want to try to, they're trying to get that 100th win, right? And I think Chase Briscoe could probably get it for them. But if Chase Briscoe doesn't go there, well, things are going to get a little bit more interesting then. Other guys that maybe fit that Wood Brothers mold, 
Cole Custer, if he doesn't end up at Front Row Motorsports, Josh Berry, he's a free agent now that SHR has folded, or even a guy like Zane Smith. Zane was kind of kicked around as a guy that would have been a good landing spot for that ride you know, last year in silly season. Maybe Zane eventually does end up there, and they try to take another run at him. I don't think so. I think they'll probably want to go with a guy that you know has a bit more experience in the Cup Series, but the Wood Brothers are certainly in play for a number of drivers as it stands. Front Row Motorsports has two seats open, and they're another coveted spot for a number of drivers to land at. Obviously, Todd Gillen will be with the team, but then they have the 34 and 36, if that's the number that they're going to stick with, uh, open for 2025. And it sounds like Cole Custer is almost a lock to land one of those seats, maybe the 34. He was linked to that ride as soon as Michael McDowell jumped out of it. He apparently, according to Bob, is going to be taking his Haas Automation sponsorship with him, which I guess is good for the sport that the sponsor's sticking around. Unfortunate that the team folded. But then who gets the other seat? Well, Riley Hurst's names has been kicked around. Obviously, uh, Josh Berry is another name. Noah Gragson. Obviously, the SHR kind of leftovers, holdovers, if you will could possibly be in play over at Front Row Motorsports if that's the direction that they so choose. Riley Herbst, I've heard something interesting about that, which we'll get to in just a second here. Uh, of course, he brings a sponsorship along with his uh, family and Monster and a B2B deal, but Front Row could have two really stout rides open. Obviously, we saw Michael McDowell get the pole this past weekend. Those cars have shown speed. They just need consistency over the course of the race at this point to kind of get that you know, program where it needs to be so front row could hold a key to silly season as it stands 2311 racing is expected to acquire a third charter from the downfall of stuart haas racing and the drivers that have been mentioned for this as bob points out are Corey heim he's the team's reserve driver trd is super high on Corey heim and Corey heim honestly is the best prospect that trd has he's far and away the best prospect that they have i don't care if you want to talk about chandler smith it's not even close Corey heim has the most upside has the most raw talent out of anybody that trd currently has and he probably can just make the jump from full-time truck to full-time cup and not have to worry about xfinity so he's high on the list but Maybe they want Corey Heim to get some more experience. Maybe they don't have the funding for Corey Heim. One thing that I've heard multiple times now is that Riley Herbst's father, Riley Herbst's family, has helped purchase this third charter for 2311 Racing, and Riley will be in that car starting in 2025 with you know his monster sponsorship and his family's B2B deal. Now, that's certainly interesting, right? Um, I don't necessarily know how the logistics would work on that in terms of ownership and equity and stake and everything that goes along with it. And what happens if Riley doesn't perform? Does 2311, is 2311 stuck with him for the long term? Is this a year-to-year -year type of deal? Do they have an option to buy out the rest of that charter? I would imagine that's maybe how this would be structured if it does happen, that 2311 Racing has the option to purchase you know, the majority of that charter or that charter completely buy out, you know, Riley's family, Riley's family side of it. That way they can control it 100%. Uh, it's interesting. I've heard it multiple times now. So I think it's something that might be going on in the background. And then Bob kind of goes over a couple of the other things that have been floated around. What happens with the fourth charter from Stuart Haas Racing, which currently isn't accounted for? Well, we know that Richard Childress Racing has been kicking the tires and adding a third charter. I've heard that three months ago at this point that they were exploring getting a third charter who would that go to would that be austin hills ride would that be potentially noah gragson it remains up in the air if they can even make that a possibility for 2025 but they've certainly inquired about it bob also mentions that colleague and rick ware racing could possibly be in play for that extra charter that's left over by stuart haas racing which isn't accounted for and honestly that's like a worst case scenario for all of us because neither of those teams are competitive obviously rick ware racing has become a lot more competitive but colleague it continues to just not have speed like i don't know the rest of the teams up in welcome north carolina right now so hopefully uh i guess hopefully rcr gets it at this point but i mean between the three of them i guess rcr is probably your best option at least they're a race winning organization at this point but i have been impressed with justin haley and what he and rick ware have done this year and then drivers that have constantly been mentioned as guys that could possibly end up in cup rides cole custer obviously his name has been on the top of the list for a couple of seats Corey heim is another driver who people are very high on christian eck is is another guy who i think christian eck is is super 
stout. I think that kid should be elevated from the truck series, whether that's a full-time Xfinity ride or up into the cup series. And then Sam Mayer's name has also been mentioned uh, a lot as a guy that could possibly end up in the cup series. We could see Sam Mayer possibly land at Colling. Uh, same with Christian Eckes. And then Heim, of course, has been mentioned at 2311 Racing. Maybe even Legacy if they were to acquire a third charter or if Eric Jones jumped ship to go to Joe Gibbs Racing or back to Joe Gibbs Racing. It could be a landing spot there. So silly season continues to be silly. Uh, things are going to have to start falling into place here soon. But again, we're kind of waiting for the NASCAR charter agreement, which doesn't seem like it's very close still. So let me know in the comments what you think about these silly season rumors. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.